very much for the invitation to speak today. So I'm arguing against this proposition that antibiotics are beneficial in children. And um, I think that we need to divide our discussion between whether they work, or well, maybe they work, but should they be used is the main point that I'm going to try and make now. Whether it's we should bow to the parental pressure um, and give them children something that could be either harmful or perhaps not beneficial at all. So, fever is a physiological response. The body doesn't allow lethal temperature or damping temperature if we allow the body to do its own job. So if we provide adequate hydration, we don't lock our children in a hot car or seal them in a hot room, uh, allow some type of air movement, and if there's no underlying severe illness, such as hypothalamic problems in the brain, the body will not allow the temperature to be harmful. And as has been said, it's actually a beneficial response that increases enzyme reactions, it increases uh, bacterial killing, virus, viral killing, and developmentally and perhaps evolution-wise, it has been developed as a protective device by our bodies. That's why we develop fevers, and that's why children, uh, animals as well develop fevers with infection. And in that respect, we might actually be diminishing the body's normal and beneficial response. So it's purposeful and it's beneficial. If we have something which is good and isn't harmful except in rare circumstances such as malignant hyperthermia where you have an, uh, an enzyme deficiency and you can't uh, handle, uh, excuse me, or where you might uh, not be able to handle fever uh, and can actually harm you and those are very, very rare. If we have something which is good, why do we treat it? Why do we do it? Why do we go against its nature, if you like? Uh, some of this has been said, so I'll just get through it. Uh, fever phobia is a relatively new phenomenon. There is uh, an association, and I want to stress the word association rather than cause and effect, between seizures and fever. Um, we've heard that uh, treatment does not decrease the incidence of febrile seizures, so the need to treat fever to reduce febrile seizures, I think, is something we don't need to, uh, don't need to deal with that one. And it uh, could be very rare that a child would have a CNS infection like encephalitis or meningitis with a fever with no other signs that a clinician could identify. So I don't think we're going to be worried about occult infections either. As clinicians, we're going to be able to see when the child is sick with fever rather than just having fever. I grant that might be more difficult for a parent and I think that uh, probably most of our job lies with how we transfer our knowledge to the parents. So, fever is associated with disease, of course, but protectively, it doesn't cause the disease. It is caused by the disease. So we have to treat the disease. We don't have to treat the thing that is associated with it. So are antibiotics beneficial in probiotic children? Well, they symptomatically, as we've heard, uh, can make bring the fever down, and I don't know that that would make the child feel better, and I even more importantly, importantly would acknowledge that that might allow the child to be hydrated more easily, it might make the parents' job of getting fluids into the child easier. But it is not necessary, and we must not let the parents believe that it is necessary for their medical condition. We have to at least be able to convey that to our parents um, and their, their children. Sometimes it just gives the parents something to do. And uh, if you're looking at uh, cost benefit to the doctor, and I say this uh, in jest, uh, you know, it probably gets the children and the parents out of your office much more quickly. And if you're in the job to make money, and I hope and believe that most of us aren't, but if you wanted to see 70 patients instead of 50 patients, the easiest thing is to give them a prescription or to give them some drug. Parents, that's what they want, that's what they came to you for. And if you give them you know, antibiotic for every fever, for every fever and and or some Tylenol or acetaminophen, you're going to get them moving quicker. It's easier, but we don't take the easy route. We need to take the route of educating our parents so that we can do what is best for our patients. We have um, 
from our Hippocratic Oath, Prima Non Nocere, we, we first of all must not cause any harm. So we've, we've got to the point where we have a harmless symptom, and my big question now is the treatment harmless? I think I've got to acknowledge, uh, after this very erudite uh, presentation by Dr. Nulsi, that if, if, if we give treatment for fever properly, probably it will not cause harm. But there are several other downsides to treating fever. First of all, it perpetuates the fever phobia. If every question that we ask in the emergency room or in the office or in the ward is, you know, how high was the fever? How long did it last? Did it respond to acetaminophen? Did you give ibuprofen? What dose did you give? The parents are going to leave with the impression that it's extremely important. But all those questions the doctor wanted to know, all the answers to. Record the fever, keep a diary. The more that we ask about those things, and the less we educate about fever being a symptom, the more we're going to enhance the fever phobia, and of course the parent is going to want to treat this symptom. It basically medicalizes something which does not need to be medicalized. I think that um, based on some of our data in our emergency room, probably one third of the children who are brought to the emergency room come for fever, and probably two thirds of those have um, come for a, a reason that could easily have waited a day or two before seeing, should have waited a day or two before seeing a healthcare professional. So there's a huge burden on emergency services and on medical practitioners for this harmless symptom. And I think that in, in, in general terms, uh, we, we should try and be able to concentrate on the more uh, relevant <coughs> parts of the illness. Unfortunately, um, we, I, this has been shown as well in emergency rooms, parents come for disease A, let's say they come for fever for five hours, and they go home and two days later the child's got diarrhea or bronchiolitis or some other disease which we've given them in our hospital. However well and clean we want to keep our emergency rooms and hospitals and offices, I think it's got to be acknowledged that we do serve as a concentration for illness and a chance for children to get infected from the other children who have been there before them. I've already said that it sidetracks parents and unfortunately many physicians and medical students, as we've also heard from more important signs of illness. I'm <laughs> going to concentrate a little bit on the point of what the actual harm that we could do directly to the patient. 